in this first year, any, any key learnings or experiences that, that are, have been important to you? It's important to at least acknowledge and recognize sort of the legacy of the organization. And so by being the first woman, as we've talked about us both sharing as, per, as well as the first person of color in this role, it acknowledges the legacy of the organization that, that perhaps it hasn't always had different perspectives to be able to shape the future experiences. And so how do we lean into now this having these perspectives and how we bring more people in because of that? And so I do think that um, you, you quickly get over the fact that you're the first because there's just so much work ahead of you. But you, what you want to also be mindful of is that um, you don't want to mess up for anybody else either, right? Yes. <laughs> so you want to make sure there's a second and a third and a fourth. That's exactly right. And so I think that you, you, you feel some of that pressure, but I think some of that is also um, declines as you really focus on doing the, the best job you can and letting the work speak for itself. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's everybody else cares about it, but after that first day, it's like, I'm here to do my job. I think for me, I think the places where it has, it's mattered more is for, for like my daughter, her, her reaction to it and her friend's reaction to it. Um, like they see me as a role model that I don't, I love that, but it's, you know, every day I'm here to like do my job. And, and so that's sometimes my reminder, as I say, well, you have to acknowledge it because it does matter for the, the women who are gonna come after us. You recognize that, that it means more to others and it's important and their, their perspectives and their um, representation matters. So how do you think about, how do you think about the opportunity that we have as the movement to advance equity and inclusion. I think we have huge opportunity and huge responsibility. I mean, we say that we are for all. And so as you described, we have to start with our own internal practices and processes and philosophies about how we, uh, just starting with our own staff, are we, are we welcoming, are we creating opportunities? And I, I, I definitely know that as a movement, we have work to do specifically in the area of um, equity for our staff of color, our leaders of color, and for our women leaders. Um, we are still an organization that is predominantly led by our male colleagues. And so I think there's opportunities around, what are the mentorship opportunities that we can create? We have some of those in place, but how do we grow those? Um, a big focus has to be on our boards of directors because if we're looking at the top of our organization at CEO positions, our boards are the ones who are making decisions. And if they're not, um, focused on equity, there it's not gonna it's not gonna move as fast as we need it to move. But I do think, you know, and, and some of the, our focus at YUSA this next year specifically is on how do we create stronger pipelines for our diverse staff. Um, diver, uh, more opportunities for mentorship and growth. We're gonna be rebuilding some of that. Um, and I, I do think mentorship is huge. When I've talked with um, some of our colleagues around the country who feel like they've been really successful in their career, they always attribute it back to someone who helped them along the way. And the fact of the matter is, is we do not have enough women in leadership roles who, and because they're not there, there's not anyone there to help our women move up, mentor. Same, same case with our leaders of color. We don't have enough leaders of color to be able to reach back and help mentor people up. So we got to work it from, from, the, from the bottom and from the top, I think. Well, I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but it is one that I, I still love is, is if, you could, if you could give advice to your younger self, knowing you know, the journey that you've had so far and what you've learned, is there any advice you would give your younger self? First of all, if I go back to my 20 younger self, don't follow the boy. That's another, <laughs> that's a whole nother, we could do another story on that sort of thing. But, you know, for, for me, I do think it's the advice of just lean into being you. And I think we, we learn later in life that, that no one else understands what they're doing either. And so you might as well be you. And so you don't necessarily have to follow any one role model or any one path because we are all so unique in our experiences that our paths unfold for us. And so I think I would have just told Dory, you're gonna be okay. So just keep going. <laughs> you know, as I guess as the, as the Dory from you know, Finding Nemo, just keep swimming because you will figure it out eventually, right? So I would definitely tell her that.